So we're going to look at predicting precipitation reactions. We need to know about Q, which is called the ion product. So you need to know this absolutely. If Q is greater than Ksp, then that means that precipitation occurs. If Q, the value of Q, is less than Ksp, then no precipitation occurs. So the Ksp would have to be given, or you would have to be given information to calculate it, and then you could calculate the Q. So let's look at an example. So we've got the concentration of calcium ion in blood plasma is 0 0.0025 molar. If the concentration of oxalate oxalate ion is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 molar, will you get kidney stones? So first you're going to solve for Q. Notice that you have been given the Ksp. So here's the formula for calcium oxalate. It is an equilibrium with calcium ion. So we're going to make a little table here and put in our number for our molarity. Here's the formula for oxalate ion. Now we're going to put in the molarity here. Our Q expression is the same as Ksp expression. So we're going to put in our values, 0 0.0025 for calcium ion, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 for our oxalate. Notice that there's 1 and 1, which is why it's 1 and 1 here. And so we get a value for Q. We compare the Q to our Ksp value. 10 to the minus 10 is smaller than 10 to the minus 9. Q is smaller than Ksp. So you will not have precipitation and you will not get kidney stones. Okay, let's look at the next problem. Is a precipitate expected to form at equilibrium when 50 milliliters of 0.001 molar barium chloride is added to 50 milliliters of 0.0001 molar sodium sulfate? Okay, this looks messy, but it's not as bad as it looks. So you know that chloride is a spectator ion, so ignore it. You know that sodium is a spectator ion, so ignore it. So you really just need to deal with the barium ion and the sulfate ion. So this is simply the volume times the molarity to give you the moles, and then volume of sulfate times the molarity to give you the moles of that. So if you look at what's happening here, we've got 0 0.00005, and we put that over the total volume because this liters will add to that liter and you will have a new volume. And that's how we get the molarity of the barium ion. We do the same for the sulfate. We take the moles of sulfate over the total volume and we get the molarity of the sulfate. So now we have those values. So what we will do is set up our Q expression. Q equals the concentration of barium ion times the concentration of sulfate. We take our molarity of barium ion and put that in. We take our molarity of sulfate ion, we put that in. So we just solve for Q. Then after we do that, we will just compare. Our Q is greater than our Ksp, so a precipitate will form. Okay, so let's look at another problem. Solid sodium iodide is slowly added to a solution that is 0 0.01 molar in copper ion and 0 0.01 molar in silver ion. We're given the Ksp of copper iodide and we're given the Ksp of silver iodide. So let's just look at A, which compound will precipitate first? All we need to do is calculate the molar solubilities. Copper iodide, our Ksp is going to be the amount we have here. Okay, so let's look at this. One, one, sorry, x squared. 
So we solve for x and we get 2.258 times 10 to the minus six. So we solve for x, we're actually solving for molar solubilities, like it says. So silver iodide, KSP, we set that up, x squared, put in our value and solve for x. Then all we need to do is compare the x of each. In other words, we're comparing the molar solubility of each. So if we look at the values, this is larger. That means that copper iodide is more soluble than silver iodide. So these are our relative solubilities. So therefore, the copper iodide is more soluble than silver iodide. So the silver iodide will precipitate first. Okay, let's look at B. Calculate the concentration of silver ion when copper iodide just begins to precipitate. So here's B. We set up our KSP and we put in the value for the copper ion and we're gonna solve for the value of the iodine. So we, and we set that equal to the KSP. So we get our iodine is 5.1 times 10 to the minus 10. We're gonna take that number and subsequently put it into the KSP expression for the silver iodide. So the KSP for the silver iodide is set up. We're solving for silver. We're taking the iodide concentration that we got previously and plugging that in. We use the KSP for the silver iodide and we solve for silver. So this is our concentration of silver, 1.627 times 10 to minus seven. So that's our answer for B. Okay, so get, let's go back and look at question C. What percent of silver remains in solution at this point? So here's the answer for C. You just take the value of the silver that you got from the previous and you put it over the value of the silver that was initial and multiply by 100. So the answer to C is 1.627 times 10 to minus 3%. Okay, now we're going to look at complex ion equilibria. So we have what's called a complex ion. We have coordination compounds. They consist of a complex ion and counter ions. The counter ions can either be positive or negative, which means they can be anions or cations. So if we look at this example, our complex ion is this component inside our brackets. The counter ion is outside our bracket. The complex ion usually consists of a transition metal and a ligand. Ligands are molecules or ions having a lone pair of electrons that can be donated to the metal ion to form a covalent bond. That type of bond is a coordinate covalent bond. So ligands are very much like a Lewis base. Here are some typical ligands, water, ammonia, chloride ion, cyanide ion. So let's look at formation of complex ions. Metal ions form complex ions by adding ligands one at a time. Each step is characterized by equilibrium constants called formation constants, Kf, or stability constants. Most books use the term Kf. That's what we're gonna use in this course. So let's look at an example. We've got silver ion. We've got the lone pair of ammonia attacking the silver ion. So this is how you would show electrons attacking, the movement of electrons. It's in equilibrium with silver with one ammonia on it. Because we had a plus charge here, our overall charge here is a plus. This would be the K for this equilibrium. 
we have a second equilibrium. This complex will then add another ammonia so that you now have two ammonias with one silver, and this also has a K. It's a different K because it's the K for this equilibrium. So if you look in solution, you would have ammonia, silver ion, a silver with one ammonia ion, and a silver with two ammonia ions. So usually the total concentration of the ligand is much larger than the total concentration of the metal ion. So let's look at a problem. We've got 100 milliliters of two molar ammonia, 100 milliliters of 0 0.0010 molar silver nitrate. And we're asked for the equilibrium concentrations of all the species. So first, we're going to just list the major species in solution before the reaction occurs. We would have silver ion, nitrate ion, ammonia, and water. So if we considered ammonia plus water in equilibrium with ammonium ion plus hydroxide, we don't need to worry about that because the Kb is so small that the equilibrium lies to the left. So we can just ignore this equilibrium process. Since the K1 and the K2 are large, both reactions can be assumed to go essentially to completion. So our net reaction is silver plus two ammonia going to the silver with two ammonia complex ion. So let's calculate the silver before the reaction with 100 milliliters, 0 0.0010 molar in 200 milliliters. And so that's our molarity of silver ion before the reaction. Let's calculate the ammonia before the reaction. We have 100 milliliters of ammonia. It's two molar. It's in 200 milliliters. So that is the molarity of ammonia. OK, so now we can set up a stoichiometry table. So this is our molarity of our silver ion initially. We got that from here. This is our molarity of ammonia. We got that from here, we put those in. And we're saying before the reaction occurs, we have zero of the complex. So now we look at our change. We have minus 0 0.00050 because there's two ammonias. For every one silver, we have to multiply that by two. So minus two times 0 0.00050 molar, and we're gaining our complex. So plus 0 0.00050 molar. So our final molarity is zero for the silver, it's all used up, 0.999 for our ammonia, and 0 0.00050 for our complex. We're going to start with the K2 and solve for our silver with one ammonia. So this was the value for K2. This is our expression. We put our silver with the two ammonias on top over our silver with one ammonia and ammonia. And then we're going to take our values here. This is our silver with two ammonias. We put that here. We're solving for this so we don't know what it is. Our ammonia is here, we put that here. So we just need to solve for this. And that will give us our first answer. That gives us our concentration of our silver with one ammonia complex. So we start with the K2 and put our values in. Now we're going to use the K1 and solve for silver. So this is our value for K1. This is our K, our expression. So we're going to take this value, which is the silver with the one ammonia, put that on top. We're gonna to take our ammonia value, which was from here. 
and put it on the bottom. This is our K1. And then all we do is solve for the silver. So this is our value for the silver. It's very small. And then we had already solved for this back in our table. So this was our 0 0.00050, which is our answer here. So we're assuming that this is our dominant species because it's so much larger, 10 to the minus four, that's so much larger than 10 to the minus eight, and it's so much larger than 10 to the minus 10. So it's kind of like working backwards. Okay, let's look at another problem. We're gonna calculate silver ion, our silver with our silver complex, and then another one. So here's our first equilibrium expression with a K1. Here's our second expression with a K2. We're gonna solve for our silver initial by putting our volumes so remember nitrate is a specter ion, we're not gonna deal with it. So here's the volume of our silver nitrate. Here's the molarity of our silver nitrate. And then if we add up the 150 milliliters plus the 200 milliliters, that's how we get the 350. So we solve for it and we get 0 0.0049 molarity. We're gonna do the same thing here with our sulfur compound. So we have 200 milliliters from here. It's five molar from here. Total volume is 350. So we get 2.86. That's our molarity of our sulfur compound. And look how much larger it is than our silver. We're gonna set up our table. So here's our silver. Here's our sulfur compound, and initially we have zero. We're gonna subtract, and again, we have two here, so we need to multiply this by two, but then we're gonna gain product. The silver ion is all used up. Because this is such a small number, we essentially have 2.86, and then we gained this silver, sulfur compound. We're gonna use the K2, so that's our value for K2. Here's our setup for our expression for K2. And then once we have that, all we need to do is put in our values. So this is the value for the top. This is the value for this one. And then we're solving for this one. So when we do all that, we get this for our molarity for this part, for that silver, silver compound. So then, because the K1 and the K2 are large, both formation reactions can be assumed to go to completion. So now we can use the K1. So this is our value for K1. This is our expression. So we have this number. We got that here and we plug it in here. We have this number from our table, we plug it in here. We are solving for our silver. And so this is our concentration of silver ion. It is very small. So from our stoichiometry table, we can find our other compound. So that's the silver compound with two of the silver, com 
the silver ion with two of the sulfur compounds. So that's the 4.29 times 10 to the minus four. Really fast. That was here. So those are the steps are the steps that you would take. Okay, so now we're going to look at a dissociation constant. It's called KD. The KD is simply one over the KF. So you want to know this. So we have a question, what is the silver concentration in 0 0.01 molar silver nitrate that's also one molar ammonia? And we're given a KF for the silver ammonia compound. 1.7 times 10 to 7. So that's the formation constant. So the KF for the silver ammonia compound is large. So the silver ion exists primarily as the silver with the two ammonias. First, let's assume that silver ion reacts completely to form the silver ammonia with two ammonias complex. So we're saying that we form the silver with two ammonia complex, but then that silver with two ammonia subsequently dissociates to give a small concentration of silver ion. So let's make a table. So our silver is from the silver nitrate. It's 0 0.010 molar, or moles, sorry. There's our ammonia. And initially, we have zero of the complex. So we have a limiting reagent problem here. So minus 0 0.01 moles. And then we have to multiply by 2 because of the stoichiometry and subtract that. And then we're gaining the silver ammonia complex. So the silver is all used up. We do our subtraction. We get 0.98 moles of the ammonia. And then we have 0 0.01 mole of the silver ammonia complex. So what we're going to do is assume one liter, and that makes it easier to fill in your stoichiometry table. OK, so now the silver ammonia complex is going to be put in an ice table, and we're going to assume one liter. So here's our complex in equilibrium with silver ion and two ammonia. We have 0 0.01 moles of our complex. We have zero mole of ammonia, I'm sorry, silver ion, and we have 0.98 moles of ammonia. We've got minus x plus x plus 2x, 0 0.010 minus x, x 0.98 plus 2x. And notice this is a dissociation. So we need to calculate the KD for the, this dissociation. So the KD equals 1 over the KF. So in this case, we put, put our value in for KF, so 1 over 1 1.7 times 10 to the 7. And now we get a KD. So we can set our KD into our expression. So 5.88 times 10 to the minus 8 equals x over 0.98 plus 2x squared over 0 0.01 minus x. We can use our 5% rule. So that approximately equals, whoa, that approximately equals x over 0.98 squared over 0.01. So we solve for x, and we get this value for x, and that is our silver ion that's due to dissociation of our complex ion. OK, so now complex ions and solubility. Let's consider that we have silver ion, lead ion, and mercury one ion. They're all in solution. If we added HCl, all of them would form chloride precipitates. 
So the question is, how can we separate these? We can do that by dissolving one of them. So let's say we get all these precipitates. We would have an equilibrium of the silver chloride with silver ion and chloride ion. And this would be the KSP value. If we added base, if we add ammonia, we'd form a complex ion with the silver. And look at that KF, that's pretty large value. So our new equilibrium would be silver chloride plus two ammonia in equilibrium with our complex ion and chloride. So you add up the equations first, you cancel what's on both sides, and you get an overall equation. And then you multiply the KSP times the KF to get the overall K. So when we multiply them, we will get a K of our new equilibrium, which in this case would be 2.75 times 10 to the minus three. That is the overall K for the new equilibrium. In other words, for this equilibrium. Okay, so let's say that you were in a laboratory and you were doing an experiment and you were asked to separate these into, you, you were asked to find if they were present. So you could have all of these nitrates. You would want to pick a nitrate solution because nitrates is specter ion and nitrate compounds are soluble. So if you did this and you added dilute hydrochloric acid as your first step, and then you used pH paper and then you centrifuged, you would get a solid, that would be your silver chloride, and everything else would remain in solution. Your next step would be to add hydrogen sulfide, or I'm sorry, hydro, hydro, hydro sulfuric acid. You would centrifuge, decant, and you would get the copper sulfide as a precipitate, and everything else would be in solution. Then you could add some sodium hydroxide. You would get this, the aluminum hydroxide as a precipitate after you centrifuged, and everything else would be in solution. Then you could add some sodium carbonate, and you get magnesium carbonate as a precipitate when you did your centrifugation and decanted, and then your sodium ion would be in solution. So this would be a very typical laboratory experiment that you would do.